Hey Pellerinos. We haven't had a little blanket chat for a while. And this year has been ridiculous. <laughs> for want of a better term. So many really shit things have happened and I never really filled you guys in. Like there were brief mentions in my video about my reduction but I didn't really uh, explain everything. If you follow me on Twitter you probably know a lot of the things I'm going to talk about but um, I can't afford a therapist so this will have to do. So first of all I started this year arguing with my old landlord, the one in my house before this. We had no hot water we had a broken window and it had been that way for quite a few months in the end I went through Acorn, a renters union if you're in the UK I believe they're at least in most major cities now I really recommend joining they helped me a lot but there was also a lot of arguments and drama that I just I just wanted hot water man <laughs> I just wanted my boiler to work it was freezing <laughs> and after that whilst carrying in my shopping I picked up a crate of cans of tonic water Ugh, I can't talk without a free movement of my hands anymore okay a crate of cans of tonic water immediately dropped it on my foot yelled out then reassured the driver I was okay before realizing a little later I had definitely broken my big toe <laughs> This is all quite early in the year. It goes downhill from there. So June was already set to be a very chaotic month for me. June was a month where I was finalising my divorce, applying to be made permanent at work, moving house and getting my breast reduction surgery. So even if nothing had gone wrong, it would have been a stressful month. But I mistakenly believed it would only be a month. So we'll start with the first on that list. Obviously getting so getting the yeah, wrong one. Getting divorced was just a little tiring. It wasn't that bad. I'm on very good terms with my ex-wife, which always helps. Um, and it has been a few years, so it's not like when we first broke up and it was very upsetting. But it's still kind of a, a weird experience. I don't know if any of you have been through a divorce, but it's just an odd feeling when that paperwork finally comes through. But again, in and of itself leading to better things for us both, not necessarily a particularly awful thing, but still stressful at the time. Applying for permanent position at work was stressful. I had gotten out of practice with applying for jobs by this point because I had been quite comfortable as a temporary worker, although there had been issues with my pay, which was part of why I wanted the permanent position so badly. Fortunately, it didn't go through in time for me to get sick pay from my surgery, so that wasn't great, but still. So I was literally off work, recovering from surgery and getting emails about interviews for the permanent position, having to contact my work about it. Um, it actually turned out okay. I basically turned up for the interview and my manager was like, well, obviously giving you the job, you've worked here for a year. So <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, but that waiting, that knowing I was going to have to delay an interview for something I really wanted, that doesn't sit very well with me. Then we get on to moving house. Final bits of moving took place whilst I was recovering and I couldn't help. Anyone who knows me and possibly you've gotten this idea from my videos anyway, I'm not one person who's very good at sitting and letting other people do things for me, like full stop. To the point where <laughs> when our last sort of van of stuff got brought in, I was meant to just hold doors for people and my housemate made me sit on the stairs because I kept trying to pick up boxes and that leads me to all the things that happened with my surgery so as I mentioned before I've lost a nipple I had a very severe infection I believe I was on like 13 to 15 um, antibiotics a day at one point quite a lot I was in a lot of pain I was having to clean out an open wound every day and replace dressings and I'd have issues with my dressings. At one point I had a vacuum pump that was like a hoover in a bag attached to me and that kept the vacuum on it kept breaking so I kept having to spend money to go back up to my doctors to get it fixed. And it all in all a very very unpleasant few months. It's only really in early November, late October early November when I was kind of healed. 
as well as that in my first week back at work I burst a stitch so I had like a secondary hole underneath my boob uh, <laughs> it wasn't a fun time <laughs> and then more stuff happened my flats caught on fire uh, I was a week into recovery I was still at home at that point I had a friend visiting to help look after me we had to sit on the curb for several for at least an hour probably a little longer whilst they put the fire out here's a photo of the state of the shop that is underneath my windows so it was quite bad so it was very stressful very stressful night I already have a long-standing fear of anything to do with fire so I didn't, then didn't sleep for several months <laughs> It wasn't good. Then, not long later, I got another unrelated bacterial infection in my leg. So I had to get that treated. I've had so many, I had had antibiotics like twice in my life until this, this year and I've had so many this year, it's ridiculous. Then my laptop broke. Then, so while I was off work recovering from my surgery, I was supposed to get holiday pay. I'd set it up so that that was meant to be my annual leave money. I never got it. I ended up with no money for several weeks um, and I'm still very much living paycheck to paycheck so that screwed me over really badly um, I'm still drowning in the debt that's sort of accumulated from all of these things my tax code then got messed up when I got taken on permanent because it was listed as a second job it has now been nearly six months and I am still on the wrong tax code so I'm owed quite a lot of money but it's still a little all over the place and I need money to live and pay off all of my debt, my god. We also had a slight issue of no hot water, so no hot water is an exaggeration. We get a couple minutes of hot water but I couldn't get a bath and the part of why I picked these flats was that I had a bath. <laughs> um, that's only just been fixed so that's five months. I then finally was feeling better, I went on a night out with a friend to a club that I used to go to very regularly and got spiked and she had to help me get home safe. Luckily I was safe because I was with very good friends and also I, th I think I clocked quite early that something wasn't right but it was still a stressful and scary experience and anyone who's ever been spiked will also know that there is no hangover quite like it. I was ill for two days so then I was back in work before I knew it as well um, so there was that. In October I was supposed to go to Edinburgh to finally meet my friend's baby who was like 10 months old by this point obviously with Covid and things I haven't been able to get up there and a couple of days before I was meant to go I got Covid. It was also the day I was meant to get my booster and if that wasn't bad enough, so I was quite ill for the first three days with Covid, um, I had to be off work for 10 days but I was quite ill for the first three days and then had a day where I kind of started to come round and then got another unrelated cold straight after it that knocked me down for the rest of the time I was off. And then on the last day I was off I got a sty, so that was a fun 10 days. I also had a several months long dispute with my old landlord about, well my old estate agents really about the deposit because they're robbing bastards who are trying to take money for things that aren't my problem like resealing the bathroom I had rejections galore from so many things I really wanted to do but I mean that's just the nature of applying for things sometimes you get rejected but it was more than usual for me this year honestly my emails just felt like a rejection box for most of the year and then my work was just a little chaotic so one day I, I, I ordered takeaway went downstairs to get it and some random person like tackled my delivery driver and I was kind of awkwardly stood by the entrance like at what point do I say hey can I have my food when this poor guy's basically been attacked one day I also went downstairs to get a takeaway I'd ordered and there was police tape everywhere and I had to get the police to pass me my takeaway because somebody had gotten stabbed outside work. I love my job but it is one of those places where chaos really reigns. When you're having a rough time of it anyway it can knock you a little further and uh, I'm not going to go into detail about this because it doesn't just affect me so I feel like I can tell other people's stories without asking them and that's kind of rude with everything but I've also had a lot of family things going on that have been quite difficult and have taken a little bit of a toll so as you guys know there was like a sort of three nearly four month gap on my channel this year and it really wasn't through choice that was the height of everything just going wrong constantly 
But I felt like I wanted to explain to you guys what was going on. But even with all of the disasters in mind, I do think most of it is leading to a better life for myself. It also really has emphasised how many incredible friends I have in my life, how lucky I am to have my, my long-standing housemate, but also my basically new housemate and her partner, and how, how screwed I'd be without that, how lucky I actually am. It's also made me appreciate my antidepressants. Two years ago, I think this year would have killed me. That's not hyperbole, I was very ill. I was very mentally unwell and unstable and whilst I've definitely still had my downs this year I've been able to cope a lot better and finally it's really made me appreciate this tiny little platform I have on the internet. If you've left a little comment on any of my videos whether it's a, like a really well thought out discussion about historical context or it's just someone saying hey this is interesting or someone saying I hope you're doing well. I do read them all, sometimes I don't really know what to reply with, but I still appreciate them. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, yes, this year was awful, but I'm quite hopeful that good things are on the horizon. I'm quite hopeful that I'm going to come through this a better, stronger person, and that is down to the wonderful people and cats in my life and you guys well you guys are people in my life I guess but you know there's a there's a slight dis difference there yeah if you've watched this far into the video thank you I have one more video for the for you this year and it's my annual talking about my goals video and how they've gone uh, spoiler alert I don't think they've gone so great this year <laughs> but that will be up around New Year's Eve sort of time but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, thank you for commenting, liking, thank you to my patrons. Whether you've been a patron long term, whether you just dipped in for a month and had to dip out again, uh, that's all helped me a lot this year. And I won't be gone for long, I'm already scripting the next season of Reformation Rambles. It truly is my love child, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!